We're going to the moon. <sighs> to the moon. I haven't played this little gem of a game in quite a few years since its initial release in 2011 by Freebird Games. Holy cow, 2011. I was still 17 and just finishing high school at the time. To the Moon is a beautiful game filled with suspense, gorgeous music, heartbreaking scenes, and squirrel fights. Just one, but it's in there. Is this game as good as the over-emotional, still-closeted me remembers? Let's find out! So, let me tell you a story about a man and his origami collection. To the Moon takes place in some unnamed future where essentially the Make-A-Wish Foundation can now just beam your final wishes directly into your brain. But before we really get going with the plot, I want to throw this out here that if you at any point think that this might be a game you want to try for yourself or it might be a game for you, just stop the video and go download it. It's really cheap on Steam right now. And I think you can also get it on a couple home consoles, if not just the Switch, so that's something you look into as well. It's a plot that I feel like everyone needs to experience firsthand. And it's really short, uh, just a couple hours, so you might as well go treat yourself to a good cry. Not that it made me cry or <laughs> anything, though. <laughs> the game starts off pretty simply. The camera pans down from a far-off lighthouse to show a beautiful house I'll probably never be able to afford. Two kids gather around a piano, playing the same two notes over and over again, until they are interrupted by a large crash from outside. A car had swerved into a tree, peeled away from a gruesome crime scene. A lone squirrel lie flattened. A victim of a hit and run. We're then introduced to the characters you'll be playing as for the duration of the game. The serious but sassy Dr. Eva Rosaline and the funny man, Dr. Neil Watts. Is Neil actually funny? I'll let you decide that for yourself. So it turns out that their bad parking job was at the very least convenient, as they still ended up where they were trying to go. They're here from the Mega uh, I mean, the Sigmund Corporation. To grant Johnny Wiles, the main protagonist of the story, his final wish. They do this by entering his mind to implant the client's subconscious desire to do what they wish at an early age, so that they may themselves willpower new memories into being, making themselves believe that they actually did the thing that they want at some point to do. So this is the equivalent of saying you want to go to Disneyland as your final wish and instead of just taking you there, they try to convince you in your mind that you've already gone. And then charge you double, probably. <laughs> but for people on their deathbeds, this is understandably probably the only way they can still achieve their dreams if they weren't able to before and living with regret about it. So. What can you do? So with Johnny only having days left to live, Eva and Neil know they have no time to waste and get right to work. But not before going on a little scavenger hunt for candy so they can bribe the kids to give them a tour of the massive house. And also having that little squirrel fight I mentioned earlier. Also, taking a pit stop to see all of Johnny's origami rabbits. He has a lot of rabbits. Oh look, a platypus. Alright, so the tour is finally done. Now it's time to enter the machine and make Johnny's wish come true. So what is it exactly? We're going to the moon! Awesome! Um... Why exactly? Ah... Uh. I guess we'll figure that one out later. So they explain the procedure to Johnny's digital memory, terrify him by deleting his caretaker right in front of him. Then they ask Johnny if he has a memento, so they can use that to start making their jumps back in time, to which he then pulls out the same blue and yellow rabbit that we saw earlier in the lighthouse. 
Then in comes the other primary form of gameplay that you're going to experience for the rest of the journey. The game from here on consists of basically traveling from point to point, watching Johnny's tragic life unfold, while clicking on every unique item you can find while trying to find a way to progress forward. Some key items will give you these little colorful balls called memory links. Get five links and you can then break the shield on the sixth special item called a memento and travel back. But before you can do that, it's time to solve a puzzle. So just flip the squares over to reveal the image and then... That's it! Yeah, it's a, it's a really simple game. It's not really a game about its mechanics though. It plays out more like a walking picture book, I'd say. That you can't really put down because you're just curious about the next horrible thing that's going to happen to Johnny in his late wife River. There's already become one filled with loss, regret, and Doctor Who references. The story from here on also progresses in now a reverse timeline, slowly uncovering the mysteries of why does Johnny want to go to the moon? What caused the barriers and misunderstanding formed around his relationship with his wife? And why do you keep making me click on pickled olives? All these things do get answered by the story's end. All very depressing in their reply. And it's really difficult to go over why this game is so memorable and good without spoiling a majority of the plotline. So, um... Here's the top 10 things to look out for when you're playing To The Moon. Those damn pickled olives. Like I said, they're everywhere. Do you like pickled olives? Um, my wife hates them. <laughs> and I bought like four jars for this bit, so... Yeah. In the game, uh, Johnny chucks like three full bottles of these things in one go. Do you know how much vinegar that is? I once went to a summer camp where me and like five other kids had to down like a extra large pickle jar, uh, vinegar and all, uh, before other kids did so we can get a prize. And it literally took all five of us to get that thing down, to which we threw it up later. Fuck that. <laughs> there are a lot of rabbits. You're going to be seeing them a lot, so you probably should get used to it. My chat on Twitch pointed this out, but apparently the wildlife in the game do a super good job at sort of creating symbolistic parallels in the story, uh, as well as leading the player on on where to go next if you ever get lost, which I think is just really cool. Oh, and... Did you ever read Animorphs as a kid? Um, I always thought that the holographic covers were really cool, but I never picked one up myself. For the most part, I used to always just read the Boxcar Children, uh, Junipe Jones, Star Wars, the Jedi Apprentice books, I was really into those, and the occasional uh, Garfield comics like collection book that they used to have. Just don't ask me if I remember anything that happened in any of those books because I, I really don't. Also, speaking of books, I had an epiphany the other day about this one right here. I think it's super subtle what they ended up doing with it throughout the story, and I totally didn't notice it the first playthrough. So if you've never read the book yourself before, I'd highly suggest you give it a read. Uh, you might come up with some parallels yourself too. So. So the trait of being unique is shat upon a lot in the story. Uh, by some of the characters, but I also think that the story as a whole does a really good job standing up for people with personalities and disabilities that limit their social interactivity abilities. We're all special and unique. Some of us just need a little more help and patience along the way, and that's perfectly okay. Also, don't be like Johnny. Take the time to be considerate of other people, and if you don't understand something, do some research. It's not that hard. 
I really, really want this platypus stuffy. I don't care if you think it's ugly, Neil. I think it's fucking adorable. Don't dead name your kids. It isn't cool. Aw. Johnny had a cute room growing up. Johnny's wife, River, is the best character in the whole goddamn game. She's a precious little bean who just struggles a little bit interacting with people, which is totally relatable. Also, slight spoiler, the story doesn't exist without her and kind of revolves around her, which honestly makes sense. Uh, my life revolves around my wife too, so that's just how relationships work. So I'm super happy that nothing bad happens to the River. Lastly, keep in mind that throughout the entirety of the game, we're exploring the innermost memories of Johnny, who at this point is dying of old age. All I'm going to say is that I'm 27 now, and I don't remember shit from my childhood. There are a couple key memories that I have ingrained in me for sure, but the farther back I go, I it's just all blank. If you show me a picture from way back when, in my childhood, my mind will try to uh, spice together a memory on its own. Uh, but in terms of how actually accurate that memory is, well, uh, yeah, hard to say. I just hope that when I'm older, I still have a decent memory. That's really all I can ask for. So like I said earlier, To the Moon is an interactive storybook that really needs to be experienced for yourself. The music is absolutely gorgeous and I have it playing on the background all the time when I'm working. And yeah, you're probably going to cry. I cried way back when, when I first played the game and I cried again when I played it last week on my stream too, so no shame. There's also a lot of depth to be had in the plot. I was trying to write a script of talking about all the themes of loss, memories, regret, and trying to achieve your dreams, but I couldn't really do that without going to tangents about the game's plot or would just get too tied up on theological BS of why it's good to feel things. But it's a good ass game. Uh, it's stuck with me all these years because of its simple but effective storytelling that just brings you right into the world and its conflicts. And shitty on Neil aside, there are some pretty funny moments in the game too. You have to break up those tearjerker moments somehow, right? And hey, if you do end up picking up the game for yourself and you're interested in more, you're in luck. Want to learn more about Eva, Neil, the Sigmund Corporation, and what it's like living in a world where being able to change your core memories might be seen as kind of ethically controversial? Then there are too many episodes that directly follow this game's plot that go over that very same thing, with more goofy antics ensuing. You want to play another fully fleshed out game that's very similar to To The Moon, that also has great music, emotional scenes, and references from our favorite funny man, Neil Watts? Then check out Finding Paradise, which is also available now for a low cost on Steam, just not on the home consoles right now. And hey, would you also like to try a game that's absolutely beautiful but with no dialogue whatsoever? Just breathtaking visuals and gorgeous music to tell a completely unique story? And where you don't have to play as Eva and Neil? Then check out the prequel to Finding Paradise, A Bird Story. You should really play it first, but I mean, <laughs> you do you. Also, if you want even more content, there was also apparently a comic book that came out that I um, haven't myself read and completely forgot about. So, hey, more content for me too. Overall, To The Moon is a game that tackles a lot of fears that we all have about not being able to fulfill some of our innermost dreams. And learning that sometimes escapism helps us cope with things that may or may not best be left forgotten. 
So with that, I give the game my final review. Eight pickled olives out of ten. That's really fucking good. Thank you so much for watching my video. I had a blast making it and being able to relive through one of my favorite all-time games. If you liked it, please be sure to like the video. Maybe consider clicking that bell, subscribing. And if you had a laugh, share with some friends. Why not? Spread the joy. If you'd like to see more content, I play all the games I'm covering over on twitch.tv slash daisycoster. So yeah, check it out sometime. Alright, till next time. Bye!